Hello, it's Shirzad again. Since you loved my scripting tutorials, I'm back with another one. This time we create a tool that animates an object based on physics. We call this type of animation physics based animation. You've all seen different animations of a ball falling and dancing to a music track, but most of the times you can tell there is something off about them. Their motion changes based on the music and most of the time it's because the animator needs to alter reality to match the ball with the tempo of the music. And let's see if we can solve this issue. This tutorial is sponsored by Autodesk and they were kind enough to let me choose the subject. You can support me in creating more useful tutorials by liking and subscribing to my channel. And let's get into it. This is a more complex tool to fit in one short video but I'll do my best to mention everything as much as possible while keeping it simple. The script will be available and free to use on my GitHub. In this tutorial I will write a max mouse tool to simulate the physics of a falling object. It will calculate the forces applied to the object, gravity, velocity, etc. And at the end, animates the object through the time frame. It will be similar to the way the famous Angry Bird game is coded. You will simply apply the force through the mouse and see the trajectory of the object in the future. If you are happy with it, release the mouse and it will animate the object for you. There are a few main sections to the code. First one is global parameters. Here I define all the parameters and the variables I need including grab point, release point, frames, trajectory, delta time and gravity. Grab point is the position where we start grabbing from. For simplicity I will automatically assign it to the position of the current node. Release point is the position where we release the mouse. So we stretch the mouse and then release it and the amount of the stretch and the vector we create is the amount of the force we apply to the ball. And frames is just the number of frames that we want to simulate or preview. Trajectory is an array of predicted positions which will be used for previewing and also animating the object. Delta time is a fraction of a second that we want to simulate each frame for. I'm dividing it by frame rate of 3ds Max to make it more dynamic. At the end there is a multiplier and it's just for controlling the speed. And at the end the gravity is just a vector that defines the direction and the force of the gravity. And now the debug function. This is a debugger which previews the trajectory and some extra information including grab and release points, number of frames and forces. You can add more information to this if you like. I'll register the function as a retro view callback just to make sure it's working. And to display the number of frames that we want to simulate for, we use an edge text. It requires a position, the text, and an optional argument called color. To define where to draw this text for the position, I use the mouse position and also the size of the screen. And as you see, the text is drawn where my mouse is. Now let's do the same thing, but this time displaying the amount of the force, which is just the length of the grab point minus the release point. And please note that sometimes they change the value of the global parameters just to check if the debugger is working properly. And now let's globally set the color of any line that we draw to yellow. And then display the trajectory as another polyline. And here I'm just adding a few random positions to the trajectory array just to make sure if the trajectory debugging is working. And this will be the end of the debug function. Let's get into the simulation function. This is the main function that is responsible for simulating and animating the object. To keep it simple, I'll have an if statement to determine whether I want to animate the ball or just return the preview of the trajectory. The arguments of the function are as followed. Node is the node I want to animate. Force is the force I want to apply to the node. Anim is a boolean that determines whether this function is running to give me a preview or it's just for animating the ball and fnom is the number of frames I want to simulate. Here I'm creating a temporary trajectory array, which is responsible for storing all the information of the simulation. And now I'm initiating the physical properties, velocity which is the force, previous position and current position. 
Now I'm looping from 0 to the number of frames and adding gravity multiplied by delta time to the velocity. Note that velocity already contains the force we applied to through the force argument. Then I'm storing the previous position which I didn't use in this case just to keep the simulation simple. Then I add delta time multiplied by velocity to the current position. And at the end I append the current position to the temporal trajectory. Now let's code the first section of the if statement. If the animation is false, which is the default value, this function simply returns the trajectory as an array. And now let's test the function to see if everything works. For the node, I use the first selected object. For the force, I just put a random value, point 3 value, animation will be false and number of frames will be 20. And as you can see, an array of point trees are printed through the listener. I assign that to the trajectory and register the debug function to make sure if it's working properly. I just change the force each time and you can see the different results in the viewport. Now let's code the other option when the anim argument is true. First I make this process undoable using undo on, then I enable the animation. Then I get the current frame of the timeline by getting the slider time as an integer and dividing it by ticks per frame of max. Also assigning one to a variable named IND, which is the index of the trajectory array. And then I loop through a specific range of frames, which starts from current frame to the current frame plus number of frames, which means if my current frame is 10 and number of frames is 20, my range will be 10 to 30. And then I use add time with f plus 1 as an argument, which means I'm just flying through time and changing the position property of the node at that time. And assign the current index of the trajectory to the node's position. Also make sure you increase the index at the end of the loop. I also put the trajectory as the return result of that scope. And to test the function, I added random values to the force and set the anim argument to true. And as you can see, it works. And now let's code the tool itself. The tool is a max mouse tool that handles the grabbing, releasing and running other functions including the simulation and debug. And then I need two local variables to store the node and the force. And now I am defining the handlers which are the functions called by the tool in different situations. Start function will get called as soon as we start the tool. Stop as you can tell gets triggered when we stop the tool. Mouse point is called every time you press or release the mouse button. But it also takes an argument to show the click number which is really useful in our case. Mouse move is called whenever you move the mouse, so it's perfect for visualizing the trajectory. This is the structure we need to run the tool. Now let's print out some information to see if everything works. And as you can see everything is working and we are detecting start, stop, mouse point and mouse move. Now let's write the logic. First I'm gonna check if the number of selected nodes are equal to 1. If not stop the tool and if yes just assign the node to the local variable underscore node. And then the stop function I'm just unregistering the visualization. Mouse point is more interesting. If the click number is equal to 1, then perform the grabbing action, which means assigning the node's position to the grab point. I'm also registering the visualizer. But if the click number is equal to 2, perform the shooting action, which is calling the simulation function with proper arguments, the node, the force, the anim, and the number of frames. It also means we're done with the tool, so we are stopping the tool at the end. But we don't have a force yet. Let's calculate that in mouse move force will be a vector going from release point towards the grab point. I'm also assigning the word point to release point, which is the 3D position of the mouse on the scene. It's needed for both visualizer as well as the calculation. And now it's time to visualize the trajectory. I'm setting the anim to false and assigning the return array to the trajectory. And to make sure the viewport is updating the visualizer, I'm forcing it to redraw. And as you can see, we have both visualization and animation.